to Sound Eklund Academy of Veterinary Imaging. I'm Robert Cole, a boarded radiologist and have been since 2005. I'm currently on faculty at Auburn University and I've had nearly a decade of teaching ultrasound here at the Academy. We're going to start with an introduction to veterinary abdominal ultrasound, specifically the big five. This will include the liver, spleen, both kidneys, and the urinary bladder. We'll begin this with an evaluation of the liver. With all of the big five organs, we're going to start with our patients in dorsal recumbency. We'll shave the ventral abdomen. This will usually include a portion of the caudal thorax, especially in our deep chested patients, and usually that will require two to three intercostal spaces. If this patient is extremely deep chested, uh, say for instance uh, Doberman or Great Dane, those livers are usually more cranially located and can be difficult to image. As a result, you may need to scan even further cranial from an intercostal approach. Sometimes it's easier to position those patients on their side. A convex probe with a frequency of at least 5 megahertz is suggested to scan the liver. Linear probes, although provide us with an excellent image, are often difficult to image the liver strictly due to the shape of the scan head and the need to get underneath the ribs. The liver is composed of multiple lobes. We talk about the left liver lobe, which is split into lateral and medial portions. We have a quadrate lobe, a right liver lobe, which is also split into lateral and medial components, and a caudate lobe. The gallbladder is located in the central sections of the liver, typically between the right medial liver lobe and quadrate lobes. The liver size itself is very difficult to determine with ultrasound and is best evaluated with radiographs. Extremes in liver size, including extreme hepatomegaly or microhepatica, are easy to determine. It's the in-betweens that can be difficult. This is a schematic of the liver, its general shape, and what organs will be next to it. Uh, as we scan through the liver, just keep in mind the overall anatomy, uh, in particular where the right kidney will set in its relationship to the papillary process of the caudate lobe of the liver, our spleen, our colon, and our major abdominal vessels. Again, the gallbladder sets towards the center of that liver, usually between the right medial and quadrate lobes. The normal liver parenchyma has a uniform echotexture, and that is interrupted by portal veins and hepatic veins. As we look at this still sagittal image of the liver, we can identify the portal vein by its hyperechoic wall. The hepatic veins have very thin walls and look as typical vascular structures. The gallbladder is variable in size, typically has a very thin wall. This is reported to be less than one millimeter thick in cats and usually less than two to three millimeters thick in dogs. The common bile duct can be seen on occasion and typically measures less than four millimeters in diameter. The liver parenchyma is typically about the same echogenicity as that of the right kidney cortex, which is demonstrated in this image where we're seeing the kidney in the renal fossa of that liver. The cortex of the kidney and liver are very difficult to separate in a normal patient. Again, the gallbladder is round or oval in shape and should contain anechoic bile. There will be varying amounts of echogenic sludge within the gallbladder. This is a sagittal image of the liver just off of midline. We can identify an area called the porta hepatis. This is where the main portal vein and caudal vena cava are entering the liver. Again, the portal vein has a very prominent hyperechoic wall, separating it from the hepatic veins. The common bile duct is seen just ventral to the portal vein, as indicated by the arrows. So now that we've discussed basic appearance of the liver and its overall echo pattern, let me show you what this looks like on a live scan. 